So right now I'm using my SmartBoard software to create a screencast to show you an example of what I would do with my students. So to create a screencast that I would then upload to my YouTube account, I would go to Screencast-O-Matic, and there's lots of screencasting options out there. Um, I'd log in and I'd click on Start Recording, and there's a screen that shows up. You don't have to download anything to your computer, although you could um, in case you don't have internet access. Otherwise, you could just do this all basically online. And I have this set for full HD, and I can move this around. And the record button is down here at the bottom. It's red. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is start the record button, and it will count down for me. And then I'm going to go to the page that I would be doing my screencast with my students. So maybe in class we'd already talked about this particular problem, and maybe for homework I'd want them to watch a screencast where they can learn how to do something with their graphing calculator with this problem. So we would pull up the graphing calculator um, emulator over here, and I would talk to my students about um, how to enter this in their calculator, um, the fact that they should go to y equals, and, and I would lead my students through this. And the nice thing is that this then is there for them to go back and look at later. Um, I'd mentioned the fact that we have to use the variables x and y instead of r and w here. Um, and so actually our r is like our y-axis and our w is going to be like our x-axis. And then I'm going to enter my other equation. And so for a student that um, was absent, if I had done this in class, they would be very, very lost with what to do. Um, you know, and as you know, students type in things wrong. Um, you know, you think this, something like this is going to take two or three minutes to, to have your students do, and it takes 15. So this is something that students could then uh, reference. Um, afterwards. So we have two equations entered and they're both highlighted here. And so I would talk to my students about the standard window. It's standard window going from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. And then I'd be like, hmm, let's see, it's not showing up and you know, why is that? Well, in class we, we talked about the fact that if we graph this by hand, our y-intercept would be 50. So maybe we need to change our viewing window. So to change your viewing window, you would go to the window button. and and so, once again, I'd be leading my students through, whoops, I don't want negative 50 there. I'd be leading my students through um, this particular problem um, in terms of how to change their, their screen. And I might not even uh, change the scale here initially. I might actually, on my screencast, have my scale set to 1 and, and talk about why we might, might want to set that to uh, 5 or 10 um, so that the tick marks aren't all a big blur. And so we'll graph this. And we can see where the, the lines intersect. And then I could even, um, if I wanted to, drag this graph over here uh, and then talk about this point of intersection with my students. And we could label um, this point of, of intersection, which is 842. Uh, so I would be done with my screencast. And I would say, done. And then I would upload it to YouTube. It says, do you want to publish this to YouTube? Which is what I want to do. Although you could publish it to Screencast-O-Matic if you had a Screencast account. So I'm going to call this one NCTM Screencast 2012. And you need a description. So the, the red stars here show that this is a required field. Demo of Screencast and flip in the classroom. And I'm just going to go down here and up, oh, let me close off my graphing calculator because I really don't need that anymore. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to upload this to YouTube. Um, and this is going to be a public video and it's going to take a little while to do this. So while this is happening in the background, um, I'm going to show you what I would do next, which is to create a survey for my students. Um, so let me close this out. And to create a survey for my students, I go to Google Docs. And actually, my survey right now is going to, um, I log on through my Google account. Um, and by the way, you don't have to have a Gmail account to create a Google account. Um, I'm going to actually create a survey here for you all, just to show you how easy this is. And so my title here is going to be Flipping the Classroom or Flip Flop Teaching with Screencasts. Oh my goodness. 
All right. And so my my first question might be, um, have you flipped your classroom? And that could actually be just a yes or no. Um, multiple choice. Oh, not paragraph text, multiple choice. So either yes or no. And um, depending on what you answer, I could actually even have this branch off to a specific page. So if you said yes, I might have it go to a question like, what do you use? I'm going to make this a required question. Um, my next question might be um, comment on what you liked about the presentation. So I'll edit this question. Um, or how helpful was this presentation? And I'm going to have that just be a text box. All right, so this might be um, all that I'm going to have here. Um, I'm going to click on Save. So that's saved. So let me close this out. And we can see that it created this survey. And this is what it would look like for the students when they see the survey. They would just go, and actually I, they can do the survey on a web-enabled mobile phone um, as well as a computer. Um, but I have them do the survey so that it helps me to see, number one, um, if they watch the screencast, number two, um, you know, where we, we use it as a launching point for the beginning of class that day. So this is what the form would look like um, to go and actually see the form and complete the form. And I actually have my students fill in their name on the form. Uh, how helpful was this presentation? Um, not so much. All right, and then I click on Submit. And that actually gets put into a spreadsheet. And it would show up right here. And there you go. We can see it just showed up right there. And so there's a timestamp. So you can see when your students are submitting these. I had one student submit this at like 1 AM one time. But let me show you the, the ones that I do, um, the ones that I have created for my students. Uh, so down here we can see um, mathematics survey is actually something I'm going to ask my students later on. So Algebra 1, uh, Chapter 7, Section uh, 9. Actually, section Chapter 9, Section 1 was a good one because uh, that showed multiple choice and also short answer. So this was on um, systems of equations. It was our very first um, lesson on solving systems by graphing. Um, that was the screencast they watched. And then these were the questions. And notice, I, I fill out the survey first. So I have um, the answer key, so to speak, at the top. And I can then, in class, uh, we go to show summary of responses. So in class, we can take a look at a summary of the responses. And I can see how many students uh, from first period answered it and how many from second period. I can see that there's some people that didn't answer it. Um, and then I can see, well, the majority um, got this question correct. The lines are parallel. There's no solutions. But we still have quite a few people that are not getting this correct. Um, down here, um, it seems like it's a little more obvious that you know, they see that there's one solution. So it, it's the no solution versus infinite number of solutions that students are getting wrong um, more often. Um, and we can see here that the correct uh, answer to this system of equations was negative 1, negative 3. And nobody got that right except for myself. So this might be a question that we might, might start class with um, the day after this screencast. All right, so how do I actually um, give students this, this web address? Because obviously that's gobbledygook. Well, what I do is I create a specific link at tinyurl um, using something called tinyurl. So let's go back up here to our flip-flop teaching with screencast survey that I just created. And um, let's go to the live form. And from the, from the live form, we have the actual live link right up here. So I just did Control-C to copy that. And I'm going to paste that into our tiny URL here. And so that way, students don't have to have um, this link written down or type it incorrectly anywhere. They just type this shortened uh, URL, this unique URL that you create. Um, there's also, I think, uh, Bitly is another one that does uh, something similar to this. So there's a, there's a lot of web address shorteners um, out there. All right. 
So let's see, um, while we're waiting for this to pop up here, let's take a look at, uh, oh, here it is. Let's put the URL in here. And let's see, I'm going to call this uh, Natero um, hyphen NCTM 2012. I'm pretty sure nobody else has a URL out there like that. So Natero NCTM 2012. And we'll say make tiny URL. And we'll see if it worked here in a second. We'll allow access. And it looks like it made it. So let's just go um, and see if it worked. Tiny url.com backslash Natero hyphen NCTM 2012. All right, we'll see if it takes us to the survey in a second. Um, there it is. So it worked. So that's the basic process that I go through. I create the screencast, create the survey um, using Google Forms, and then create the tiny URL for the Google Forms. Now let's go back to see if it's uploaded to YouTube at this point. Um, if it hasn't, I'll just pause it. Let's see. Oh, it's still working on uploading. So I'm going to pause this screencast for a moment, and I'll show you what I do after I upload it. So that just took a few minutes to upload, but here we have the link. So we'll just click on this, and it's opening this in Google Chrome. And here we can see the title of the screencast, and it's starting to play back the screencast. Go to the page that I would be doing my screencast with my students. So maybe in class we'd already talked about this particular problem. Okay, so that's what I just recorded a little while ago, and you heard that. You can make this full screen. Um, of course, it's, it's somewhat uh, blurry or a little bit blurry. Um, and it's it's very blurry on a large screen, um, you know, in a in a convention center. But um, it's actually really good for um, you know a small screen, small computer screen, or um, a cell phone uh, screen. Um, and usually, I have this actually be a, a full size when I I do my recording. But the interesting thing with YouTube is now you can actually um, add some en enhancements and some annotations. Um, one of the things you can do is closed captioning now. So you can actually add closed captioning for your students that are hard of hearing. Um, and we can also add annotations. And here's um, what I mean by an annotation. So let's say I wanted to um, add a question here. And my question for that particular screencast might be, um, what if it, um, instead of the uh, one Go to the page that I would be doing my screencast with my so let's say um, my, my annotation might be, um, I'll add a, let's say a speech bubble here. Uh, my annotation, and notice it's appearing here, uh, my annotation might be, um, how would the graph change um, if uh, the uh, R became the x-axis and w became the y-axis. So what if we reverse the labeling of the uh, two uh, for, the, for the graph? Um, you know, is it still going to be in the first quadrant? Um, you know, and um, it's interesting because with the first equation, students might think that the answer is going to be still in the first quadrant, but um, we can recognize that if uh, the number of right answers is zero, um, they're going to get a negative number of points. So it's possible that that we would have um, that be the case. Let's see here. And let's say I want this to be bigger. I could have this be bigger. Um, I can also change the font size. I can change the font type. Um, and I can even change where this is going to start and um, end. I might want this to start um, at a different time. Um, let's say I want this to start at uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds. And well, that says 33. Um, and we'll have this go to 239 uh, or 38. It, it, I, I do know that this uh, takes a little bit of, of playing around with here. All right. And notice right now this is not in HG. So if I wanted to have this in HD, I could actually play this in HD, and it, it, it will make it better. And notice down here we've got our annotation. We can even play around with this 
and, and change it that way, and it changes the time. So go to the page that I... So um, it just put the annotation right there, um, and the students will see that at the end. So that's a nice thing about your screencast is that they don't have to be perfect. You can actually uh, go back and fix things if you need to, or if your students are creating their own screencasts, um, it's likely they would forget to put something in there or say something really important so that they can um, add that to their uh, screencast as well. So that just gives you a little idea of how I uh, create my flip-flop teaching with screencasts. And uh, this particular video showing this um, will be uploaded to YouTube.